Welcome everyone to this edition of In the Driver's Seat. It is no secret that electrical demands on vehicles have increased significantly in recent years. As technology has evolved, it has brought on board things like start-stop technology, ADAS, enhanced infotainment, navigation, as well as the electrification of previous belt-driven systems like power steering and air conditioning. With all these additional loads comes additional strain on the vehicle's battery. And just like all other technologies in today's vehicles that have evolved in recent years, so too has the battery. So to talk a little bit about that today, I've invited Dan Audi, Executive Vice President Commercial with Strighton Energy to be, my, to be my guest today. So Dan, welcome and thank you for joining. No, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Pleasure is all mine. And, you know, before we take a deep dive into some of the newer battery technologies, can you give us a little bit of background, Dan, on Strighton Energy and their role within the automotive aftermarket and the industry as a whole? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of starting from a from a halo perspective, Strighton Energy is really at the forefront of advancing energy storage in the U.S. with a unique suite of domestically manufactured solutions ranging from automotive applications to motive power applications to backup net network applications and really entire battery energy storage systems. And we do this through a number of different technologies, whether it's lead acid or lithium. Um, and really from an aftermarket perspective or an automotive perspective, um, you know, we have a broad portfolio of products um, that we use today uh, including conventional, uh, what we call SLI batteries or starting lighting ignition batteries, right? Uh, along with EFB, which is enhanced flooded batteries, and AGM, which is uh, uh, what we call an absorbed glass mat uh, battery. We'll get we'll get more into that, but those are three of our big platforms. And now we've also got a partnership with Battleborn Batteries. Um, with Dragonfly in the lithium ion space for for automotive type verticals. Well, yeah, you guys are uh, you know, well diverse in the battery market for sure. Um, so, you know, kind of like I said in the intro, you know, the automotive industry is undergoing a rapid evolution, you know, with all the electrification of everything. So regardless if it's BEV or ICE, the demands, again, on that 12 volt system continue to grow. So with all this electrification and added technology, there's a significant amount of strain put on the modern battery system. You know, when you think about that start-stop technology that, you know, when the vehicle's off sitting at a stoplight and the loads are still on that battery, it's, it's, put, it's stressing that thing significantly. You know, what are some of the shortcomings for those who don't understand of the, the traditional SLI battery in an application like that? Yeah, I mean, so to step back, I mean, when you look at what uh, uh, we used to ask a battery to do, the vehicle, we'd ask we'd ask it to start the engine, and basically that was it. The alternator would kick in or the charging system and recharge that battery, get it ready to really um, support the next time you need to start the vehicle. In emergencies, you could use battery power for a certain period of time to run your accessories if you had had an incident, but the battery was designed to start only. Now, what's happened today is, is you've talked about the vehicle market. You know, when, you, when, we, when we step back and we look at the vehicle market, there's over 280 million vehicles in operation today and growing. The age, average age of a vehicle is 12 years and growing. So, people, you know, the market's getting bigger and people are holding on to their vehicles longer. Um, really, what's happening now is, you know, what you just talked about is we're asking, you know, the battery now to power more accessories on the vehicle. We're asking it, you know, for key offloads. We want it to open the hatch. We want sliding doors. Well, all that needs to be powered and you need a different type of technology than what we historically used in a, in a starting application. No, that's, that's excellent insight. I mean, you're right. It's, you know, there's so much more load put on that battery, um, you know, the SLI battery, the way it's designed, it's just not designed to work, um, you know, in an, except, you know, in an environment like that for a long period of time. Um, so with, you know, with those increased loads, especially when talking about the start stop technology, you know, that shift from the SLI design to a cycling design is obviously needed. So walk us through some of the developments that Stryton and the industry as a whole has taken to meet that challenge. 
Yeah, so there are a couple of big a big pieces of this are first of all, what is the product design? So the, the product's got to be designed differently from what a starting application is. And what that really means is uh, for both EFB and AGM, it's going to be more material. So think about more lead, more lead oxide, more um, other componentry in in the in the pace to help us cycle that product. Uh, so that's that's a big change of it. But then you have to think about from the manufacturing process. You know, you have to do things differently than you did with just a standard SLI battery. They're going to take longer, you know, advanced lead acid is going to take longer to form than a traditional SLI battery. Uh, Compression is going to be key in both EFB and AGM applications. Um, so you have to be much more precise in how you manufacture than you historically were with just a starting application. Dan, can you explain to us a little bit about enhanced flooded battery technology, how it's different even from AGM and kind of where the benefits lie, um, you know, between an enhanced flooded battery versus an AGM product? Absolutely. So uh, with an enhanced flooded battery, what we really do differently from uh from the AGM product is, is the cells of the battery are flooded with acid. So you have an actual liquid electrolyte inside the product. So very, you know, very similar to an SLI product. Um, and why that can be advantageous is in high heat environments, um, you need, you want more liquid to be able to cool that battery down. So think of your battery under the hood if you're driving in Arizona. You've got, you know, your under the hood temperatures are over 220 degrees. You're going to want to have something uh, that is, you know, an electrolyte that's actually provides as a coolant to that to that product versus AGM, which is what we, at sometimes we call can be acid starved because you have a limited amount of area to put that that electrolyte or acid solution inside the separators. So enhanced flooded batteries are fantastic for what we'd call under the hood applications. Now, vice versa, AGM, if your vehicle comes with a battery inside the cabin, you probably want a non-spillable type of product that can be vented uh, rather than potentially having a battery banging around or coming loose. Uh, so inside the cab, we say AGM is, a, is really a good solution for um, your application. Well, that's really interesting. I, you know, I, that I've heard the inside the cabin with the AGM, but I did not know that about the FB technology and how well it responds to, uh, or a better response to heat. So that's, that's something definitely that, uh, you know, people need to know about and need to keep in mind. Right. Um, so I have to ask, you know, as technology enhances, you know, as these vehicles with, with more of the start stop technology and, and, uh, more electrification, um, start rolling into that aftermarket sweet spot, so to speak of that four to 12 year old the range. Um, every day, more and more of the vehicles that shop owners and technicians see roll through their bays are going to, you know, utilize some of these enhanced battery technologies like EFB. Um, so I have to ask, you know, on, you know, you at being as a manufacturer and then the technician and shop owner at the end, in the middle, you have that distribution network and channel partner network. Um, you know, is the distribution of uh, EFBs, you know, from the manufacturing side, do you see it being where it needs to be to support the growing demand? You know, today we don't see that at, as being at scale. You know, we are seeing tremendous growth in the OES channel because the OES wants to have a direct uh, replacement for what came in the vehicle as OE. So if the, the, the vehicle came with EFB, they want to have an EFB replacement. Um, what, we're, what we're seeing now is because EFB came to what, what I'll call the, the OE a little bit later than AGM, we're starting to see the vehicle population grow uh, with EFB applications, and they're starting to come into that sweet spot. So what, what's happening is um, retailers and wholesalers are, are going to have to do a couple of things. They're, they're going to need EFB on their shelves as a direct replacement uh, for the vehicle. Otherwise, you know, consumers could be going to the OES channel looking for that product. But also, you know, we talked about EFB being good in high heat applications. It's a great, it's a great sell up opportunity for people with high electrical loads um, who have a, a battery under the hood that they want to upgrade from an SLI to an EFB. Um, 
but you're also going to want to provide choice to the consumer for start stop applications. You know, mostly today, uh, if you go to a retailer or wholesaler, you may have only one option if you have a start stop vehicle for a replacement, and that would be AGM. Um, as we know, the aftermarket consumer wants to have choices, and we think you know, as more and more of these cycling vehicles come into the car park, people are going to need to have options um, that they're going to want to choose from to fit their application. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And that's, you know, as somebody who was a, a technician for a lot of years, and then also, you know, on the sales side, it's just something I always think about and want to be cognizant of just to make sure that, you know, the customer has those choices and that the, you know, the technician and the, the shop owner is providing um, the customer with the, the best opportunity to, uh, you know, have the correct application for their vehicle. So that's important. I appreciate that. And lastly, you know, earlier you had talked about lithium uh, ion, or lithium ion technology and, and you know, LI batteries are a hot topic in the automotive industry, especially, you know, on the high voltage BEV side, but there, you know, there's a growing trend, especially in, you um, you know, some of those recreational applications, golf carts and trolling motor batteries and things like that going towards lithium ion technology. A lot of the reasons for, for those is because of the weight. Um, are you seeing similar trends in automotive? And if so, what are the benefits of going maybe with a lithium ion battery? Well, you're, you know, you're exactly right. Let me, I'll probably start with, let's talk about where is lithium really a good uh, opportunity or idea by an application. So today, you know, when you talked about an RV, golf cart, marine, um, and, and the reason is lithium is, you know, there's no maintenance required. It charges faster. It's got a little bit higher voltage, so it performs better in things like golf cart. And then it's got long life. Now, it's it's very expensive compared to lead acid today because we're, we're not yet at scale um, or what I'll call even recyclability of lithium, lithium ion. If you think about lead acid, lead acid's been around, you know, over a hundred years and we're continuing to you reuse that lead that was mined out of the ground years ago to recycle and make new batteries. We don't yet have that, that, that value chain or that ecosystem for lithium. So that's really, when I think about it, at some point, the Holy grail for lithium is going to be that, that closed loop recycling with some value add from, from that. Um, but then really talking about how does it fit in with automotive today? You know, when you look at an electric vehicle today, all of, or I'd say 99% of them still have a lead acid battery. And that's really to help manage the system. You know, lead acid is a very steady, easy technology that when you need power or you need to manage, you know, um, a system or a BMS, it's very good because it's always on and it's always there for you. It also handles cold weather very well. Now, some of the issues you're running into in electric vehicles is we need to get to the point where, where lithium in cold weather temperatures is not where we where we need it to be today. That will that will come in time. It's getting better and better, but cold weather can be an impact on on how you have a um, how your how your battery performs from a lithium standpoint. So as that gets better, I think you'll start to see lithium become more and more of a viable solution for start stop vehicles. Excellent. I mean, those are great points. And I, you know, <laughs> the cold that definitely, you know, that that makes sense. So I mean, it's you know, a lot of those recreational applications that we talked about earlier aren't operating, you know, in in the the, the freezing temperatures that you see in the north, but automotive, you definitely are. So that, no, that's some great insights. So Dan, no, I, I, I appreciate your time today. I mean, like I said, I, I believe it's imperative that technicians and shop owners stay up to date on emerging trends and technologies to make sure that they're servicing the customer's vehicles correctly, right? Replacing failed componentry with the correct parts to ensure the customer has a confident repair that they can depend on. So again, Dan, I really appreciate you joining me today, um, as well as everybody at home. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I'm Eric Screen with Endeavor Business Media, and until next time, thank you for watching.